So if you ask Mason that question about Patrick, Mason was more tough on Patrick than I was. Yeah. Yes. Every day. I mean, it's three days a month. Who's the guy? Because you, you choked Larry Johnson when he played for Charlotte. Charlotte. You mm -hmm. fought Xavier McDaniel. Which one was more uncomfortable? <laughs> once uh, a I mean, once a teammate, like I said, a lot of guys, superstars on teams, don't like one another. So when another guy comes, I'm welcoming you because I think you're going to help me win. I don't take it too personal. You know, they traded you here, so you got to deal with it. I'm already here. There's so many great stories. You know, there's the Barkley stuff, of course, Tyrone Hill, there's legendary stuff. Do you have a favorite story from the book, Frank? The Tyrone Hill one is terrific. Obviously, the Dennis Rodman one later on in the book where Charles is a part owner of a restaurant in South Beach. So this is, you know, they're both retired, long retired, and Dennis Rodman sees Charles in South Beach. Charles says he's dressed like he's wearing a dress. I don't know. That's true. That but he's told him to one. go to his restaurant. That was the second dress. One day he was like, what else was the dress? <laughs> he told him to go to his restaurant in South Beach. Charles gets a call. He's heading down there. It's right by Prime 112, which is right, 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 right around the corner. Yeah. And Charles gets a call from the manager. Says that Dennis Rodman is going around taking food over people's plates. So Charles walks in, or he looks outside the window, and he sees Dennis Rodman walking around. He walks right up to him, grabs him by the shirt, drags him out. It might as well have been 1997 all over. <laughs> <laughs> and then what happened? Uh, no. I'm just waiting for my people the other way. <laughs> I mean, the funny thing too was he'll tell you stories and you're like, ah, this can't really be true. So you do like a lot of research. So he had told the story about Michael Jordan's 40th birthday, and Michael was living in the residence in uh, the Rich Cross Stars in, the in DC. So he claims he had this historic storm, winter storm. It was in February. Sure enough, I looked it up. Crazy storm. He said everyone got stowed. He says except for Donald Trump, right? <laughs> So, and he kept saying, somehow he got out, somehow he got out. So I'm researching, I'm looking all over the place. And sure enough, the Washington Post, one of the gossip columns a few days later, that mentioned Michael Jordan's party. They mentioned the storm. They mentioned one person got out, Donald Trump. They quote Donald Trump bragging about the fact, I'm the only one that got out. <laughs> <laughs> that was in what, 2001, 2002? Yeah. Weren't you the, the chef for that party? Yes. And there's a lot of luminaries there. Why? Yes. You love your cooking, but why not enjoy it? But why do you want to be the chef? That's a lot of pressure. Well, <laughs> you know, the day after his birthday, so the day it was snowing, so as veterans, we gonna do what we supposed to do, go to practice. We we got up by eight, got to practice by eight thirty, and we got there. Most of the time, you think some younger guys gonna be there. You know, we there, the, the coaches there. It, it was like. Young guys call it, we can't come through DC, it's snowing, we never, you know, play this type of weather. I mean, you know, in the city, the weather's snowing. But, you know, most of the guys from the south, so in DC, you know, the snow, morning winters, they're gonna shut down, like state of emergency, but they're not used to bad weather like that. So we was there in practice, so the girls said, well, let's wait to 9.30, so guys might drag in late. Nobody never came, so. <laughs> we was just only two veterans, so Mike said, everybody's still in town, what you wanna do? I said, I don't know what you want to do. He said, um, I'm going to call George. I said, I'll go to, you know, you call George, he'll go get some drinks, I'll go get the food. I'll meet back at your place about that third as well. And start cooking. So we organized all of that. He started, you know, getting his wife on. He was to call the people who still left. So I go to, I think, Safeway on West Coast Avenue. They didn't have Whole Foods, I think, then. <laughs> <laughs> I go to Safeway. You know, get enough people, enough food, like 40, 50 people to come back. It's when they were cooking, and they started coming in around 435. And, you know, we just did that. Then the next day, they said, wow, we're going to stay another day. So we did it, all, we did it two days in a row. Wow. <laughs> but the next day, we did go to practice. Okay. <laughs> the, the other story for him, though, is Judge Brown. Judge Mathis. Judge Mathis, that's right, in Detroit. So Charles shows up at an event in Detroit. It's a musical. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. afterwards, they're at a bar, restaurant type of place, Very he gets into place, it yeah. with uh, Judge Mathis. And you know, Charles was ticked off. You know, fast forward a couple of months, maybe a year later, Oprah Winfrey's having a fundraiser for Barack Obama wow. out from California. Yeah. Charles shows up, there's Judge Mathis, sees him. Charles claims that he saw him turn around. <laughs> 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 